Welcome back. We love rooibos. Yes. It's true. We've proven it on the show, whether you like it with milk or not, or <laughs> condensed milk, however you take it. We love it, and we love the fact that it is purely South African. Perhaps not all of us know, in fact, that rooibos is a plant that can only be produced in parts of the Western and Northern Cape provinces. And just recently, a massive step forward, the European Commission has now included the product designation of rooibos, or red bush, into the EU's geographical indication register. So rooibos is the first African food to be approved by the EU for listing on this particular register. And to tell us more about this is the spokesperson for the SA Rooibos Council, and someone who I would imagine feels like they've won a massive victory <laughs> right now, is Adele Dutoy. Adele, a very good morning. And good morning. I suppose congratulations. Yes. Thank you so much. Good morning, Graham. Yeah, we are so excited. This is really a breakthrough, breakthrough for the rooibos industry and for South Africa. Yeah, sure. so, so let's, let's break this down and let's get them Zanzi as excited as we know they should be. Let's start off with, the, with this. What is the EU's Geographical Indication Register exactly? I mean, what, what is this and why is it so important? So the GI Register or Geographical Indication Register is a legal register and that includes names of agricultural products and this can include food, wine, spirits, etc. And these are all registered and protected across the European Union. Now, um, rooibos has been included as a GI for a long time, for about five or se seven years, um, under the European Partnership Agreement. Um, but we as an industry really recognize the close connection between rooibos, the area in which it grows, which is so important, and the people and the traditions involved in the industry. And that's why the South African Rooibos Council um, really feels that it's important to protect rooibos and to support and promote the sustainability of the product and also our rich heritage. And that's why we pursued the PDO or the Protected Designation of Origin GI. Because, you know, they're, they're sappers in the UK that are looking for that <laughs> store where they can find that rooibos because they need a taste of home. I would imagine this has a very powerful economic undertone. So what does this recognition mean for the rooibos industry here in South Africa? Why are you so excited? Oh, so there's a couple of things. So the first thing is that rooibos can now only be recognized as produced in the parts of the Western Cape and the Northern Cape provinces. So the, in this way, we can protect our heritage and safeguard what is ours. And also, of course, those benefits will go to the producers of the region. And um, also what's very important is it is bringing rooibos a valuable competitive advantage because it's so unique and people in the European Union know the PDO uh, register and the landmark or the logo. So they will recognize rooibos to be completely unique. And that, in that way, it will increase, increase the demand um, of the product. And of course, those benefits will come back to the farmers and the designated producer production area. And the last one is that it will help protect the rooibos trademark worldwide. All right, money, so money, 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 money. <laughs> Look, you're speaking about the producers, obviously, but when it comes to the community as a whole, mm. I mean, surely there's some benefit here just with regards to everyone that's been around and associated with rooibos, but how exactly would this potentially impact them? Absolutely. So we know, especially now with COVID-19, um, the continuous and uninterrupted supply of safe Nutritious and affordable and sustainable food is so important and also providing essential jobs and income. And with this, actually, rooibos will help, or, or with this registration, it will help to sustain the rooibos industry. A higher consumption, of course, will be increased recognition worldwide. And then, like I also said, is preservation of our traditional knowledge and the further upliftment small-scale farmers in the indigenous communities where rooibos is grown. It also will help to protect and support and promote the sustainability, not only of rooibos, but the rich heritage of the industry as a whole and, of course, South Africa. And we know that there, there are cultures that have been leaning on the medicinal properties of rooibos for centuries, yeah. millennia, probably. Um, so it, it's a, an amazing step forward. But just to kind of give us a gauge of just how much of a step forward this is, maybe let's compare it to some of the other products on the EU's geographical indication register. What are some of the big names that stand out? I'm thinking Champagne must surely be one. Absolutely. So Champagne, Port, Irish whiskey, Camembert cheese, there's a long list, and like you said, uh, rooibos is the first African food to be included on the register. 
Uh, I can understand why you are smiling from ear to ear. This is a massive leap forward for the industry, yes, but as you've highlighted, most importantly, for the producers and the communities that are going to be supported by the boost in infrastructure. It has been an absolute pleasure connecting with you this morning. Once again, congratulations. You are now free to go and have a sip of tea, and I'm assuming it's going to be rooibos this morning. <laughs> It's standing here next to me, so I'm going to enjoy it. Good girl. <laughs> we'll catch up with her in a bit. We've got a part two. We're going to be discussing so much more about Rooibos. You definitely want to stick around. And I mean, it's only fair that we've got a masterclass in plants, so mm -hmm. it's uh, time we do the same for coffee. Oh. It's my feel-good birthday show. Welcome back, you beautiful souls. We're live right here on S3, opening up and educating you on plants and one of our favorites, Roy Boss. Now, it's one of South Africa's most iconic products and it's recently been included in the European Union's Geographical Indication Register. Now, this certifies products that are produced, processed and prepared in a specific area using a particular traditional method. Now, we're continuing the conversation with a spokesperson for the SA Roy Boss Council, Adal de Toy. Are you still with us, Adal? Yes, I enjoyed my cup of tea. Thank you so much. I was going to ask if you had moved on to your second yet uh, and you'd be forgiven for doing so. Let's delve a little deeper into the significance of making it onto this register. How much influence does this register or how much influence does being on the EU geographical indication register have around the world? How does this change the perception of a product? So, of course, it really, the EU or the PDO logo is very well known in the EU and European consumers know the logo and they know that that stands for products that are um, created and farmed and produced in a specific area. But this is so important to be included into the EU register because it makes it now easier for us to apply to third country GI status in other parts of the world, like China or India or even in the US. In the South Africa don't have other bilateral GI agreements, but we also want to ensure the protection of the product in other countries. All right, so, so it's the first major step, yeah. Yeah, big step, major step, but since we yep. are being included on the register, what exactly happens now? What's next? So now all robust products that are produced in South Africa and exported to the European Union can carry a protected designation of origin logo. And this is well recognized all over Europe. And it marks the product as a unique to one designated area, of course, here in the Western Cape in South Africa. And it makes it super, super valuable. So there's also a registered name and a certificate that you can download if you have products that contain rooibos. And this gives you proof of protection. And these can also be shared with your clients and your industry partners. And of course, because we know rooibos is part of such a wide variety of biodiversity here in our, in our lovely country. And we also believe that the process now will pave the way for other um, indigenous products um, to be registered, including buchu, aloe ferox, and even mm. spackworm that you spoke about earlier. Oh, setting the bar with rooibos. Yeah. I'm loving it. This is a bit of a watershed moment. I it love is. that. Maybe this is a silly question, but it's been kind of on my mind since we started speaking. Why can rooibos only be grown? <laughs> in parts of the Western Cape and the Northern Cape provinces. What makes this location unique? Well, Graham, rooibos' terroir is totally unique <laughs> and it can't be found anywhere else in the world. So rooibos required specific climatic and geographical um, conditions to grow. Um, it also grows naturally in higher altitudes, so between 200 and 1,000 meters above sea level. It's also adapted to survive in the unique geographical conditions in the Cedarberg mountain range where it mostly grows. So that area is predominantly arid. It experiences hot, dry summers. And trust me, I've been there in the summer and it's been 47 degrees. And it also has cooler, wet winters. And the vegetation is a mixture of mountain fynbos, which of course Rebos is part of, and succulent karua plants. So very, very unique area. Because just looking at it, it looks like a desert. It looks like it's <laughs> able to grow in the toughest exactly. of conditions. That's, no, that's, the sand there looks like sea sand that it grows in, so it's very interesting.
Wow. Um, gee, you want to start farming, man? Ten, <laughs> <laughs> well, Look, uh, uh, one thing I know and, and, and come to know is obviously most of us in Mazanti have grown up with rooibos, so it's definitely one of South Africa's most iconic products. Now, it's weird to think that it's only now the first food to be approved by the EO, EU for listing on the register. I mean, surely this is overdue. And for me, the question is, what do you expect to see next? You mentioned something like buchu, which is big to my heart as well. What would you love to see being recognized as a part of some of South Africa's incredible offerings to the rest of the world. Well, Raul, I know this has been long in the making and, and the South African Rooibos Council has done incredible work and it's taken a couple of years to get to this yeah. point. But like you said, South Africa has such a rich diversity of fauna and flora and we've got so much to be proud of. Um, the Cape Floral Kingdom, of which Rebus is one, um, is basically the smallest floral kingdom in the world, but has almost 11,000 plants in there. So we have such a rich variety of, of uh, uh, resources here in South Africa that we can be proud of and we must make sure that we protect. Uh, we can be incredibly proud of your efforts as well, you and the council. And I would suggest to our viewers, go to sarooibos.co.za to get more inspiration and information. Adele, it's been an absolute pleasure connecting yeah. with you. Um, give yourself a big pat on the back and go and have another cup of rooibos because Cheers. you guys <laughs> have earned a really, really massive leap forward, I'm going to say, for the industry. So congratulations once again. Thanks so much and thanks for the opportunity. Just to that, yeah. I'm parched. I'm, I'm going to get a farm right, right now. Um, absolutely <laughs> love that. Just an expression of the power of our incredible biodiversity here in the Cape.